Hello there, my fellow Inner Sphere captains, and welcome back to another lore video on Battletech. Today we shall make a return to a topic I started about two months ago, give or take, which is all about types and models of dropships. You can already find two of the videos I made, one of the spheroid dropships and another one on the aerodyne dropships in this very playlist. Today we're gonna describe another three dropship models, which, like the title says, are considered assault variants. One thing I want to get out of the way though, is that most models of dropships are not limited to just one role. So when I say, for example today, assault dropships, it doesn't mean that they can't be used as something else, for cargo or civilian or even other purposes. That kind of designation is more like a guideline, instead of something more abstract like the difference between a light battle mech and a heavy battle mech, for example. So, without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The first, and probably the most unique vessel of today, is the so-called Claymore. This has a length of 87 meters, or 285 feet, a width of 74 meters, or 242 feet, and a height of 25 meters, or 82 feet. The Claymore is one of the newer designs implemented by the Armed Forces of the Federated Commonwealth, a design that was supposed to be produced after the recovery of the Helm Memory Core, a relatively small but still well-armed and armored assault vessel. The design phase began among Great Hush Hush in 3047, but with the clan invasion refocusing AFFC funds towards new battle mech design and production, the prototype of the Claymore only took its maiden flight at the end of 3053. Production was approved after a successful operation with the 6th Lyran Guards in 3054. It would be the Shipil Company that produced one Claymore every 9 months. The majority of them posted along the edge of the clan occupation zones, ensuring that they became a primarily Lyran design after the formation of the Lyran Alliance and the dissolution of the Federated Commonwealth. The majority of the new produced ones would make their way to the Sky Loyalist units. While some have criticized this vessel for lacking adequate firepower for a proper assault vessel, its weapon array is more than enough to give pause to many opponents. Its six nose bays contain most of its weapons, a mix of ERPPCs, ER medium and large pulse lasers, Streak SRM-2 and LRM-20 launchers, and an LB-10X autocannon. The rear of the vessel repeats the same basic layout, outside of omitting the ER large laser and Streak launcher and having two small pulse lasers instead. Its wings mount a mix of a forward-facing large laser, LRM-10 and LB-10X autocannon, paired with a rear-facing large laser and streak to launchers. Another version of the Claymore is known as the Claymore Interceptor. This one adapts several experimental weapon systems to increase the range of its firepower. The armor, the fuel, and the performance remain nigh identical to the baseline variant. The standard weapons are removed and replaced by LRM-15s, silver bullet gauss rifles, bombast lasers, and laser AMSs, which is anti-missile system. The rest of the weapons were built to clan specification. Four ER large lasers are located in the wings, while two clan large pulse lasers cover the rear. Seven more ER medium lasers are mounted in the nose, and four are covering the rear arc. 63 extra heat sinks dissipate all the heat generated by the weaponry. To make room for all these new weapons and heat sinks, this variant reduces the cargo space to 263 tons. The second vessel of today is the imposingly named Colossus. With a length of 125 meters, or 410 feet, a width of 135 meters, or 442 feet, and a height of 165 meters, or 541 feet. 
Once upon a time, after being embarrassed by a lack of coordination and cooperation among their units taking part in war games in the periphery in 2651, the high command of the SLDF responded by creating their famous Regimental Combat Teams, or RCT for short. The military was seeking a class of dropship that could carry and support this new formation during an operation and Mitchell Vehicles Interstellar responded with the Colossus class. A grand design massing 20,000 tons and being the biggest assault dropship ever built at the time. From the very beginning, the Colossus was designed to fulfill the needs of an RCT and enhance that unit's ability. It was equipped with the most advanced armor and weaponry available in the time, driving the vessel to cost over 700 million Starlink dollars per vessel. But despite this very high cost, it was designed to be easily repaired, and its components were very robust, adding to its reliability and endurance. While they did perform admirably in their intended function, the cost of replacing even one of them was very high. When both the manufacturer and the majority of the vessels were destroyed in the Amaris Civil War, the Colossus was replaced by the smaller, yet much cheaper Excalibur. When the war was done, only five vessels were known to have survived, and even those were taken by Kerensky in the Exodus. Some other examples have since been discovered. One of them was found on the Lyran world of Fekda by Snord's Irregulars in 3024, and from that they salvaged unknown but presumably substantial amounts of Starlink technology. The ship was then cannibalized by the Lyran Commonwealth forces though, Another crash-landed one was recovered from a hidden Starlink depot on Epsilon Eridani, by the Lone Star Regiment in 3067, and even restored to flight status. During the Jihad, a Federated Suns facility called Clyde Shipyards actually started building the design once again for the armed forces of the Federated Suns. Weapon-wise, the Colossus has a lot of them both to protect itself and provide fire support for its units. Located in the nose of the vessel are two Arrow 4 artillery systems, which can only be used when the ship is grounded. Joining these are two Gauss rifles, two ERPPCs, and an ER large laser with an additional four medium lasers. Covering the four left and right firing arcs are two LRM-20s, an ERPPC and an ER large laser with four medium lasers and the same setup covering the rear firing arcs. Protecting the aft of the vessel are two ER large lasers and four medium lasers. All four LRMs are fitted with Artemis 4 fire control systems and the ship's ammunition complement includes 30 Arrow 4 missiles and 96 Gauss rifle rounds. The Colossus is also equipped with no less than four cargo bays, designed to carry elements of a regimental combat team and all its equipment to a battlefield. The first bay is a dedicated vehicle bay, able to carry up to 72 heavy vehicles and is serviced by two doors. The second bay can carry up to 36 battle mechs, able to enter and exit via four doors. The third bay is dedicated to transporting infantry, normally 12 platoons, also with four access doors. The fourth and final bay is reserved for general supplies, with a capacity of 726 tons. The third vessel for today is the ominously named Intruder. This one has a length of 69 meters, or 226 feet, an identical width of 69 meters, and a height of 61.5 meters, or 201 feet. The intruder was designed to carry out raiding and assault operations, and it is smaller than the more common Union-class vessel. This makes it more suitable for the high-risk heavy combat where battle mech support is not mandatory. It is adept at carrying out various types of operations independently, anything from intelligence gathering to securing a foothold during an invasion. With heavy weapons spread evenly around the hull, the vessel is very hard to take out, even when on the ground. Because of its landing gear, which is rather unique, and extends it down from the hull instead of out like most other spheroid designs, the hull of a landed intruder is flush with the ground, 
making it almost impossible for the enemy to get under the vessel and place demolition charges. The landing gear can quickly extend back and down again in order to provide sufficient ground clearance for the fusion drive to ignite, allowing the vessel to get airborne in just about 30 seconds when required. Besides the weapons, the intruder will typically carry a company of marines for spacecraft boarding and ground operation. It has three bays, which are enough space to set up target practice simulators or conduct physical exercise for the marines and the crew. The intruder is also notable for its well-appointed medical and surgical facilities, including an emergency room with two operating tables, a six-bed intensive care unit and a dispensary. With a highly sophisticated command center featuring map boards, tactical intelligence displays and battle computers. The command and control facilities on the intruder even rival those on the command versions of the bigger unions or overlords, although its capacity is limited to smaller battalion-sized formations. The biggest producer of the intruder in the inner sphere was Andurian Aerotech, a division of Free World's Defense Industries. However, during the Andurian secession, Andurian Aerotech suffered badly and it forced the company to halt all production. It wasn't until 3046 that the Free World League rebuilt the factory and production resumed. The recovery of Lost Tech would also spur the company to introduce a new variant of the Intruder in 3056. Weapon-wise, the Intruder was equally at home fighting on the ground or in space, with its large weapons array fairly spread out across the entire surface of the vessel. The nose bays mount a single PPC, LRM-20, AC-5 and two medium lasers, with another PPC and LRM-20 rack, paired medium lasers, and a single large laser on each four angle. The rear quarters of the craft are also heavily armed, featuring two PPCs, paired AC-5 and AC-10s, and two SRM-6 racks each on a rear angle, with another LRM-20, two large lasers and two medium lasers mounted directly aft. For ammunition, the vessel carries only 3 tons of AC-5 ammo, 4 tons of AC-10 ammo, 6 tons of SRMs, and 11 tons of LRMs. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these free so-called assault dropships for today. Goes without saying that there are other models of dropships, assault or otherwise, which I still haven't covered, but to which I will get eventually. Out of these three, the Intruder, the Colossus and the Claymore though, which one did you like most? Did you ever use one of these in your own games or fought against one? You can share your thoughts, stories or opinions on the matter in the comments below. If you found the episode informative or entertaining, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thanks a lot for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. This is GDN signing out.